What's going on guys? Uh, Matt here from Gentry Custom Knives and today we're going to talk about finishing Damascus um, to get that really good deep contrast to make all those layers pop really good and a lot of people have been asking me how I've been doing it and today um, I'm working on a Damascus steel scout and I decided I'd kind of kind of walk you guys through my process for getting the final finish um, etching it and kind of sealing in that etch so it lasts. Um, the billet that I'm working off of today is this piece right here of Alabama Damascus and this is their kind of their ladder pattern. Um, one of my favorites to work with and so that's kind of what I'm going to cover today. I think that this process would work for most uh, carbon steel Damascus and it also um, works for a lot of San Mai. If you are doing some stainless Damascus, Dama steel, stuff like that, it's a lot different process. And maybe I'll make a video on that in the future as well. But today we're talking about carbon steel Damascus and getting a really good finish. All right, so before I start hand sanding this blade, um, I'll show you guys kind of what the finish looks like. Now, this is ground up to an A65 Trizac belt. Um, and I find the finer you can take it on the grinder, the easier the hand sanding process is. So um, take your time grinding it, go up through the grits nice and slow, uh, remove all of those super coarse grind lines um, before you move to hand sanding just to make your life easier. Now, I like to, you know, hand sanding, I'm not gonna get into super detailed, but what I'm gonna do with this is start with 120 grit um, that rhino wet sandpaper, I, I go from 120, 220, 400, and 800. Now, with, with this high carbon Damascus, I find anything over 800 doesn't make the contrast of the pattern any better. Um, now, if you're like I talked about earlier, if you're doing like a stainless Damascus, I mirror polish that and you get really good results with this, you know. Up to 800 is as high as I like to go um, to give really, really good results. So makes it a little easier. And yeah, so I'm gonna jump to hand sanding, probably show you guys a little of that process, and uh, we'll talk about etching it after. So like I said, I'm starting with 120 grit sandpaper on a little sanding block, and we're gonna hit these flats. And these flats are already finished to 180, so I'm just really lightly making sure I've got all my scratches out of that with this 120. And so it doesn't take very much time um, on these flats as long as you finish them properly on the surface grinder. And then we're gonna move to the bevel. And I wanted to do this really quick and show you guys what this looks like. because you'll be able to see some spots that I maybe missed with those finer grit belts like I was telling you about just by doing a few passes with the 120 and you'll see kind of some spots that need to be worked on. Now I'll bring the camera around right now and show you guys what I'm talking about. So this is a little bit hard to show but you can see yeah, let's Kind of on the spine right here you can see those kind of more aggressive scratches and then you work your way in a lot of times around your plunge is a spot that uh, some of those deeper scratches show up so and right around the tip right here too so these i did a pretty good job on this um but there's still some spots that need a little more attention than others all right, so I'm gonna work through this, um, like I said, 120, 220, 400, 800, and then I will check back in with you guys once we're ready to etch it because this video isn't really about hand sanding, it's more about finishing Damascus. There's a ton of videos out there on hand sanding techniques and stuff like that, so I'm not gonna really get into that, but uh, I'll check right back in as soon as we're getting ready to etch this and um, show you guys that process. Okay, so, Finished hand sanded that, like I said, I brought it up to a 800 grit 
finish and we are ready to do our first etch. Now, the first thing I do is clean the blade really, really good, okay? And I use lacquer thinner, acetone, whatever you have at work. Um, do a couple times where you clean it. You wanna get all those oils off the blade or else when you go to etch it, you'll get streaks and stuff where there was maybe a little bit of uh, oil or fingerprint or whatever. So what I do is just clean it twice with a rag and then I uh, wipe it down one more time with a little piece of a really clean t-shirt material and that gets whatever little residue that was left from the lacquer thinner off of it and gives you just this really nice clean finish to uh, work off of. That way there's no problems. Spend some time, clean it up good. It'll be worth it. So now that uh, this thing is pretty much ready to etch, my finish looks really good on it. Um, we'll talk about what we're using. So I'm using a mixture of ferric chloride acid and apple cider vinegar and this is the ferric chloride i use and i'll put a link below to that and just whatever apple cider vinegar you have and i do a 50 50 50 mix um and there's a lot of different ways to do it but that's how i do it um and the first step is i just run a little wire piece through that this is my little acid tank now the first etch I put in and I'll let it sit for about five to 10 minutes. Um, the time depends on how strong your acid mix is. Um, after you use this for a while, it weakens a little bit and you might have to etch it longer. If you're working with a brand new bottle of etchant solution, it'll be maybe only a couple minutes for your first etch, um, but you can, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it or not, but it gets dark really fast and that pattern's looking really cool. You can pull it out and kind of see that you cleaned it properly. There's no streaks. It's looking really good. So I am going to let that sit for, like I said, probably about eight minutes. And then I'm going to pull it out and we're going to start our kind of, it's a couple stage polishing process um, before it goes over to the coffee etch. I'll talk about that in a minute as soon as this is ready. Okay, so it's been in for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna pull it out, show you guys what it looks like, and then I'm gonna do a really light, uh, I guess I'm gonna call it a polish with 1200 grit sandpaper, kind of over the whole blade really lightly. We're gonna do a quick rinse with distilled water and then it's gonna go back in the etch for another 10 minutes. Now, what this does is it kind of, I guess it just polishes and shows those layers better. When you bring it up to 2000 doing this, and then you do a coffee etch, um, compared to if you just did an etch at 800 and neutralized it and left it, the contrast is way, way better between those layers of steel. So um, it takes a little bit more time, but it really gives you good results in the end, and it's well worth it. So let's pull this out, show you guys what it's looking like. So there you can see that pattern's looking really good. And like I said, you could neutralize it and leave it like this, but what happens is if you don't coffee etch it, um, it loses its color really fast with use, you know what I mean? So the coffee etch really sets that dark and light contrast, and you'll see here at the end of this video how good this looks. So like I said, a little 1200 grit paper, you don't have to go crazy with this, just you're lightly kind of hitting the top, cleaning it up. Get in that where your uh, plunge is, make sure you kind of get in there with the sandpaper. I should have gloves on, but I ran out. I gotta get some at the store. And you can see 
I'm gonna give this a quick rinse and I'll show you guys what it looks like. This, does, this isn't super precise or anything like that. It just really helps out with the final result. You can walk, kind of rinse this in the sink too, but I don't have a sink out here. So a little distilled water. You can see what it looks like now. And then we're going right back into the etch. All right, we'll do that again at 2000 grit. Then we'll go to the coffee etch. Okay, so while that's etching, um, this is what I use for my coffee etch. This is Nescafe brand instant coffee. Um, this is what everybody uses. I haven't tried a ton of other ones, but this works for me. When you brew this up, I do about a half of a jar of that instant coffee with this much water. It's one of those big mason jars. Um, and what I found is if you use a fresh batch of instant coffee, like if you just brew it and etch it while this is still hot, um, it works really good and really fast. If you're doing a ton of knives, it gets old brewing up new batches of coffee every time. So I save this and I'll do four or five, six knives with one batch of coffee. It just takes longer when it's cold and been sitting for a while. So maybe your etch only takes, uh, you know, maybe an hour if it's fresh. And if it's not fresh, you might have to leave it in for 24 hours or so. So that's kind of the difference. So like I said, this is etching. I've sanded it at 1200. It's etching again. And then what I'm going to do is pull this out of the etch after, I don't know, it's been in for five minutes. I'm going to leave it another five and I'm going to do exactly what I just did, but with 2000 grit sandpaper. I'm going to rinse it with distilled water and then we're going right into the coffee etch. Um, so I will check back in, might be tomorrow, might be way later tonight, and I'll show you kind of what it's looking like after that coffee etch. Okay, now what I do is I went inside and kind of wet sanded this with the 2000. And I'm going to show you really quick uh, what this looks like before it goes into the coffee. Just to give you an idea of what it's looking like so far. Pretty sweet. So now, right into the coffee. And I will check back in with you guys whenever this is finished. All right, that about wraps it up. So once you pull it out of the coffee, what I like to do is rinse it really, really good, neutralize it with, I just use uh, ammonia Windex and then dry it off with compressed air and then coat it with whatever oil you like. I, I dunk it in three-in-one oil. You can cover it in Axe Wax, whatever you want to do to protect it. And that is the end result. So there's a lot of different ways to finish Damascus. And depending on what Damascus you're using, it changes how you finish it. So hopefully this at least answers you guys' question on how I finish Alabama Damascus. And this works for all of their patterns that I've tried. Their low layer, their, I have that one called like redneck skin that finishes the same way. Um, and uh, yeah, so pretty cool. I'm going to get some handles prepped for this thing today and get it wrapped up. So hopefully you guys learned something. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And like always, guys, thanks for watching.